No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico makes it feels like home. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. On this episode, we're taking on Southeast New Mexico. By bike, by horse, and by car, through mountains and sand, we explore this diverse portion of our state. You ready, pretty boy? Let's do it. Rui Doso lies in the Sierra Blanca mountain range, and its alpine scenery lends to all kinds of awesome activities, two of which I'll be trying today. Up first, mountain biking. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good. I'm Michael. Michael, I'm Brett. Nice to meet you. Brett, nice to meet you. It's a gorgeous day to go riding right now. It's always... It can, couldn't be better, man. Yeah, and you're on your whole get-up, got the GoPro. I feel so unprepared right now. Am I going to be okay on this? No, you're fine. You're fine just like that. Okay. You'll see. You'll see once we get up there. Man. All right, let's hit the gondola and get up there. Ski Apache just put in new gondolas, the only ones in the state, so you can cruise to the top of the mountain in style. So like I said, I'm a novice, so I don't know much about my mountain bike riding, but I know they can be kind of steep sometimes. So am I going to be okay on this? I think you'll be good, man. It's, like I said, this trail is this one we're going to go on right now. Mm -hmm. It's good for people who are just starting out. It's okay. good for people who've been riding for a long time. Okay. It's, uh, it can hit us pretty much as fast as you want to go. That made me feel more confident for what was in store. No matter your level of experience, Ski Apache has trails for every type of rider. Easy, medium, and advanced. Ready to do this? Let's do it. I'll let you lead the way, okay? Okay, all right. Just at your own pace. Uh-oh. Cutting along the ridge, the stunning views can make it hard to keep your eyes on the trail. Ultimately, I had to stop to take it all in. Oh, look at this view. That's gorgeous. You can see the whole mountain from here, man. You can see it. Go on there, man. You got white sands down here? No, oh, that's white sands over there. Yep. Yeah. Man, you're right. You can't really get a vantage point like that from, from the <laughs> bottom. There's a bunch more views like that to come, man. Yeah, let's keep on riding. And this trail has everything. Some technical spots and rocky descents, and some nice long stretches to coast as well. If going 20 miles an hour downhill is not good enough for you, taking in this beautiful, beautiful vista, and you get to call this home. Oh man, I'm so thankful to call this place home, man. You are lucky. <laughs> this truly is a great introduction to Ruidoso, and thankfully, it's all downhill from here. Literally, that is. Once I made my way down the Sierra Blanca Mountains by bike, I headed for the neighboring Sacramento Mountains to the end of the Mountain God Stables for my next adventure. Landscape by horse. The guides at the stables will select a horse that fits your level of experience and will saddle them up and get them ready for you to go. And what's this I'm, guy's I'm name? You that old. His name is Pretty Boy. Pretty Boy, that sounds like me. Beautiful. Okay. Howdy. Hundreds of years ago, these mountains belonged to the Mescalero Apaches. They were nomadic hunters and warriors and roamed freely throughout this mountain range and throughout the entire Southwest. You feel like there's nothing but wilderness all around you. You ask me, this is how you spend a Saturday. I'm coming through. Ho, 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 ho. I'm Michael Newman, and this is New Mexico True Television. Ultimately, 
this homeland of the Mescalero Apache people beckons to be taken in by horseback. Who's ready for dinner? Here's some tips for your outdoor adventure in Rio Doso. Mountain bikes, helmets, and gear are all available to rent at Ski Apache. You can get a pass for a single ride, half a day, or a full day. Reserve ahead of time for a horseback ride with any of the mountain gods, and the stables offer a free lunch with every ride. A great mini road trip from Rio Doso is a cruise along the Billy the Kid scenic byway. Packed with history that inspired countless books and movies, and legends that have grown stronger with time, this trip invokes a sense of what it meant to really live in the Wild West. My first stop along the route is at Fort Stanton, a fort initially established in 1855 to help protect early settlers from raids by the Apache Indians. I met up with Larry Pope, the fort site manager, to learn more about the earlier life and times of this fascinating place. This place is like a whole time capsule. I feel like I'm in another era. You are. Come see what we've got. Okay. So what's the historical significance of Fort Stanton? Fort Stanton has got a long history, and if you look at the architecture of all the buildings that's surrounding, it's indicative of the, the many different eras that we have here. The fort, in its many incarnations, operated as a tuberculosis hospital and as an internment site for German merchant seamen during World War II. This building here was uh, built in 1855, originally as a uh, barracks for the fort at that time. Uh, during the hospital years, it was converted into a, a dining hall and a kitchen facility. But this is one of our newest reconstructions. What we've done is we brought the visitor back into 1858 by remaking that barracks. Well, this is an example of, of one of the bunks that we have here at the fort. And this is actually a four-man bunk. Two men on top and two men on bottom. In that it, tight space. In that tight little space, <laughs> they would sleep head to toe. Uh, uh, what you would get is extra body heat. You'd get to share blankets and everything. And right. This is where the term bunky comes from, if you ever heard that one. Situated along the picturesque Rio Bonito, you can see why this land was such a draw for early settlers, and why so many travelers still venture to this part of Lincoln County today. And as much as I hate to leave, I'm excited for my next stop, Lincoln, New Mexico. The old stomping grounds of one of the state's most notorious historical characters, Billy the Kid. As soon as you pull into Lincoln, it's as if you are stepping back in time. The town is perfectly preserved, and you can't help but to feel like you're going to run into Pat Garrett, John Chisholm, or Billy the Kid and the Regulators on any given corner. This town was the hot seat for the Lincoln County War a range war between rival factions in 1878 in what was then the New Mexico Territory. The amount of history here is mind-boggling. Thankfully, I was able to have the monument's manager, Gary Cousins, to show me around and break some of it down for me. Lincoln is one of the eight historic sites in the state of New Mexico. Gary started off the tour with one of the most popular sites in Lincoln, the Tunstall Store. John Tunstall was a prominent rancher and merchant whose operation rivaled that of James Dolan just down the road. Tunstall had Billy the Kid and the Regulators on his side, but Dolan had an army of his own. And the rivalry would go down in history. Tunstall said there was a lot of money to be made in Lincoln County and, and he intended to make half of it. Mm -hmm. But he underestimated James Dolan. Um, in about 20, 30 miles southeast of here on February 18th, 1878, Tunstall was murdered. Um, out in the middle of nowhere, and that's what started the Lincoln County War. That was the spark. That was the spark. Billy the Kid was in this window right back up here with Ollinger's double barrel shotgun, and Ollinger came to this point right here, and Billy the Kid leaned out the window and said, hello, Bob, and uh, gave him both barrels of his own shotgun. So at the end of the day, while the town may appear as it did back in the 1800s, Thankfully, the Wild West antics are no longer a threat. Fort Standing and Lincoln aren't the only highlights on this stretch of road. Be sure to check out the architecturally captivating Spencer Theater, as well as taking time to visit Smoky Bear Historical Park in Capitan. After being rescued from the Capitan Mountains as a cub in 1950, Smoky went on to become the living symbol for forest fire prevention. And his final resting place is right here in Capitan. A wonderful place for children of all ages, this site features exhibits, educational programs, and gardens to enjoy. Before you hit the road, here's some things to keep in mind. Check out the calendar of events at Fort Stanton for military reenactments and candlelight tours. The Lincoln Historic Site is open seven days a week, 
but on Sundays you can get free admission with your New Mexico ID. Children under 16 are always admitted for free. And coming up next, we've got some art that is out of this world. Sign up to receive monthly newsletters about events and happenings around the state at NewMexico.org. And now, from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. When you hear the name Roswell, most people think of, well, aliens. Or maybe the New Mexico Military Institute. But lesser known is the fact that the city of Roswell also has a thriving art community. I was fortunate to have, as my personal guide, one of Roswell's native artists, Miranda Howe. Nice to meet you. It's so great to meet you. I'm oh. so excited to be here. Thanks. Good to have you. Welcome to the Roswell Museum and Art Center. This is part of our art collection. This piece behind us is wow. Louis Jimenez, wonderful uh, fiberglass sculptor and printmaker. Miranda walked me through the many galleries at this museum, whose collection, while vast, does showcase regional and New Mexican art. And I must say, we represent well. There's a stunning display of work on these walls, and the vibrancy and boldness of these works really reflect the essence of our state and the Southwest. Actually, this piece was done by my cousin. Wow. Uh, he's a painter here in New Mexico and uh, depicting the Chisholm Trail and all the cattle drives that went on in this area in That's the early amazing. days. The Roswell Museum and Art Center has a huge archive of artwork and is constantly rotating its exhibits. So you're likely to see something new each and every time you visit. So I can't wait to see some of your artwork if it looks like this. Oh, well, I'm a ceramic sculptor and my work is in the next museum we're gonna hit, the Anderson Museum of Contemporary Art. Oh, so we'll go perfect. over there next. Cool. The Anderson Museum sits right along the railroad tracks and has become a beacon for the Roswell art community. So Michael, I wanted to introduce you to Dawn and Sally Anderson and How Sue are you? Wink. Wonderful to meet you. <laughs> These are the visionaries behind the museum and the Roswell and Artists in Residency program of which I've been able to be a part and Sue works here and kind of keeps nice the gears you. rolling. I, I'm just walking in but the art is amazing. There's so much <laughs> color and thank you guys for starting and cultivating the arts in Roswell. It's really amazing. I couldn't believe we walked in the door and stumbled upon an opportunity to meet Don Anderson, a key catalyst for this burgeoning art scene in Roswell. And as I found out in our conversation, in his late 90s, Don still arrives for work at the museum every day. Talk about passion and commitment. Not to mention many of the paintings I am admiring on these walls are his. These walls are covered from floor to ceiling with some incredible artwork. Much of it by artists who participated in the Artists in Residency program Don founded. I never knew such exceptional art was being created right here in Roswell, and so much of it. This has been an eye-opening experience to say the least. Okay, so we're gonna walk to where my piece is, yes. the work that I created while I was a resident. So I've been working on these large-scale ceramic pieces. Oh man, like um, big uh, building blocks, like what kids used to play with. Yeah, <laughs> like blocks, you know, I'm interested in architecture and geology and, and decorative patterning. So okay. I've been combining those into these kind of geotype forms. That's cool. Uh, you know, so cool. even though it's very time consuming, it's certainly what I'm driven to do. Right. The Roswell Museum and Art Center and the Anderson Museum of Contemporary Art are just two examples of Roswell's thriving art scene. And we've just scratched the surface here today. From the Creative Learning Center for Kids, community public art projects, to art leagues and co-ops, Roswell is truly a little known jewel in New Mexico's world-renowned art community. Once you've had your fill of art, head over to Big D's Downtown Dive to fill your belly. Spend some time wandering Main Street and delving into the many treasures at the Roswell Antiques Mall. Before your trip to Roswell, here are a few tips. Both museums are open seven days a week. For a trip to outer space, check out the planetarium at the Roswell Museum and Art Center. And be sure to get a great taste of the outdoors at Bottomless Lakes State Park, just 15 miles outside of town. To read the article on the Roswell art scene in New Mexico Magazine, go to newmexico.org. And stay tuned, we're gonna go nuts for what's coming up next. And now from our Cabinet Secretary of Tourism, Monique Jacobson. Here is another New Mexico true treasure. 
Between Alamogordo and Tularosa, there's a roadside attraction that is nutty. McGinn's Pistachio Tree Ranch has a sign that's hard to miss. They call it the world's largest pistachio, and it would be hard to argue with them about it. While it's obviously a great photo op, it is also the gateway to treats created by this family-owned operation. The shop in the shadow of the Big Nut sells pistachios in almost every form, from sweet to salty to spicy. And the looming icon on the pedestal outside also helps draw attention to a little publicized agricultural crop in New Mexico. Sure, we grow the finest green chili, but New Mexico farmers are also nuts with pistachios, pecans, and peanuts. So next time you drive by McGinn's Pistachio Farm Ranch, pull over and pull out your camera. New Mexico true treasures like this giant nut are everywhere you look in New Mexico. You can get information about visiting them and all the places on today's show by visiting us at newmexico.org. Some people find the journey is just as much fun as the destination. My friends Laura, Sasha, and I are taking that to heart today. We're heading to White Sands to check out the full moon, but we're gonna make a couple stops along the way. First up, Valley of Fires Recreation Area, which is located on US 380 just west of Carrizozo. This is one of North America's youngest lava flows, which occurred about 5,000 years ago. Complete with a visitor center, picnic tables, and 19 campsites, Valley of Fires is also great for just a stretch of the legs on the paved nature trail. Next up, Three Rivers Petroglyphs, located just off US 54, about halfway between Carrizozo and Tularosa. This area has one of the highest concentrations of petroglyphs in the southwest, created by the Hornada Mogollon people between 900 and 1400 AD. Like Valley of Fires, Three Rivers Petroglyphs has campsites and picnic tables, as well as restrooms and drinking water. So on your next New Mexico road trip, take a little extra time and see what you can discover along the way. You'll be glad you did. Coming up, the only place where you can surf in the desert. Need a reason to hit the road? Find upcoming events around the state at newmexico.org. White Sands National Monument is located on US 70, about 15 minutes drive from Almogordo and about an hour from Las Cruces. At about 275 square miles, White Sands is the largest gypsum dune field in the world. And while the dunes appear still and peaceful, they actually are dynamic, with some of them moving up to 30 feet per year. My friends Laura, Sasha, and I are ready to hit the dunes. I'm speechless right now. Oh man. Don't you feel like we're a caravan walking through the, the desert? You feel like you're the only person out here, you know? I know. <laughs> oh, and I kind of just want to fall into the dunes. It's, it's, it's like, a, like, a, like a big bed of white sand. Would you, would you guys, do you guys mind if I do this? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to jump. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Does that look like it hurts as much as it does? Awesome. You can't help but to think of snow when you're out here. And Sasha and Laura had to try their hands in making snow uh, sand angels. Huh. Yeah. Okay. My wings are a little bit bigger, but that's not a <laughs> Okay. What are you trying to say, huh? You're more of an angel than I am? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> you also can't help but think of the beach. And we came across a family surfing? How are you guys? Good. So is there a secret to sliding down? No, not really. You just rock yourself back and forth. Yeah, the secret is you've got to say your prayers before you <laughs> It seems like you guys are going down pretty fast, so I need to learn all the technique first. I'm, I'm kind of heavy. You go further. Oh! Woo! Oh! Wow! That was fun. <laughs> Now do it again, one more. <laughs> oh, wow. Good. Woo! Awesome. Perfect landing. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's my daughter. I would daughter. love to try. Cool daughter. <laughs> You can sure meet a lot of nice people in a place like this, and these folks were very generous in letting us try out their sledding equipment. But you can also lose yourself here if you just hike a little ways off the road. You can feel like you're the only ones here, although you might see a person or two off in the distance. like a cartoon. <laughs> Watching the sun set over white sands reinforces what a beautiful state New Mexico is. Truly, the land of enchantment. Down to the last drop. Wow. Really? Seriously? Uh, I can't stop looking. <laughs> I know. It's like, where did you go? I know the moon should be coming up. And there is. Anytime soon. Yeah. Oh, look at the sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We came here today to see the full moon, and we weren't disappointed. Oh, <laughs> oh she's creeping. She's creeping. It's so bright. It's so bright. It's like yellow. It looks like the sun it's like almost. like fire. Oh, that is so amazing. What a wonderful way to end the day at White Sands National Monument. For your journey to the dunes of White Sands, here are some hints. Check out the calendar of events for special full moon hikes and bike rides. If you don't bring your own sled, they can actually be purchased at the gift shop. Pets on a leash are always welcome. From alpine forests to endless sand dunes, the Southeast has some of the most diverse landscapes in the state. So get out and see it for yourself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm your host, Michael Newman. We'll see you next time on New Mexico True Television.